So for the past three seasons, Arena Cross it has been a phenomenal thrill ride. The Pro Class Championship has gone down to the wire every time. As race fans, that's what we're dying to see. It's fair to say Arena Cross provides that again and again and again. With that in mind, do you think AX UK is the most thrilling, most exciting dirt bike race series there is? Six years, Matt Bates's Arena Cross Championship has been touring the UK, entertaining the masses with its unique brand of adrenaline-fueled mayhem. 2018 saw a third consecutive championship war between Thomas Remet and Cedric Subiras, settled in the dying moments of the final round. For 2019, however, we have some new soldiers on the battlefront. After many successful events, AX returns to Belfast, the spiritual home of indoor racing in the UK. But this year, things are different. What I love about it, my job, being out there hosting the show, commentating on it, it's just the most unpredictable circumstances in, in our sport, you know, the very nature of it. Incident happens all the time. We've had a rundown to the series last three years, going to the wire. There's crashes, there's incident, there's drama, and it's all in the dry. You know, in January, when in the UK, it's hard to even get out and ride your motocross bike. So for me, it is a different to motocross. I'm a motocross purist, but this, it, it just intensifies the drama. And that's what I love about it. I genuinely feel like that. That's why I'm not sort of going through a routine out there when I'm doing it. I get into it, like proper, proper into it. So for my part as a commentator, having been involved in a ton of different sports across the action sports spectrum, I have to say that I get the most excited about the racing at Arena Cross. I've done other racing, I've done water sports racing, jet skis and powerboats and, uh, and obviously individual sports, wakeboarding, snowboarding, surfing, the, the, the whole shebang, but you can't beat racing and I'm really struggling to think how you can beat the racing that Arena Cross offers. It is so intense. It is so all over the place. I mean, obviously you've got riders who are on form, who you'll put your money on, but then it could go any which way, just because the tracks are insanely tough, tight and compact. The atmosphere is electric as well. And I mean, I know from a hosting point of view, that makes my job easier. I do always ask the question to the riders, does that make your job better, easier, and getting more pumped up? Uh, having thousands of people right on top of you, screaming for you. So definitely, in my opinion, out of the many events I've seen and the many events I've worked at, Arena Cross Racing, you can't beat it. I think Arena Cross is, is definitely the most thrilling race series in the UK. I think it probably is in Europe. What I hate doing is thinking that you can just rely upon something being the same all the time and it's always going to be successful. So for me, it's like, right, I sat and thought about it and I thought, well, I'm going to shake it up even though I think it doesn't need fixing. And that's why I put the 450 and the 250 class together and thought, right, well, I can't keep ending a tour with it going down to the last race and the last two riders. I'm not going to get lucky again. So let's shake it right up and make it dramatic from, from the first round, the first race. So the way the new format works is we get the 450 riders and the Pro Lights 250 riders. We get 12 of them in each class and then they race in two main events each. And then after those two main events each, we find the top five point scorers. And those top five point scorers go straight into a main event super final where 250 race 450. Then for everyone that doesn't qualify, they go into the head to head. And the winner of the head to heads goes into that super final too. So we're up to 11. And the 12th place, the final place, is the last chance qualifier where everyone that's failed to qualify thus far ends up in that race. It's do or die, final race, final position, and they get on the start line with the, um, with the 450s and 250s. 
The reason why I wanted to change the format was because there was only one race where they scored points in the whole night, and that was the final. Whereas now, they score points in everything. So they, they score points in the first main event, the second main event, and the super final. So it is do or die from the minute the, the gate drops from the first race. I think anybody organizing any big sporting events will be in the same position as Matt Bates, the director of Arena Sports Live and Arena Cross is in, in terms of trying to please as many people as you can while keeping it really, really entertaining for the people paying the money to make the show actually happen. To keep this thing going, to keep Arena Cross rolling and progressing, you've got to mix it up once in a while. So absolute credit to Matt for mixing the schedule so it doesn't go stagnant. I think putting the two classes of bikes together, the 250s and the 450s, in the same race in the final is exciting for so many different ways, not least because there are riders out there who are always having that conversation over which bikes are better. There are your weekend warriors who are deliberating over whether to be on a 250 or a 450, and then they're gonna get the examples, the, the proof in the pudding of these guys going toe to toe. To have like pros coming straight out, straight into major races, no heats, because even way you look at it, the heats are exciting, but the, the second blocks of those heats have always been a little bit cagey where, you know, people are just doing what they gotta do to get to the main. The show's going to start, they're going to come straight out and every race counts. So to have the 250s separate and the 450s, but then to get the top five from each, well ultimately top six, and then go into a super final at the end of the evening, where all bragging rights, 250 or 450 or not, it's, it's going to be pretty epic. Who are my tips for the top in this series? Let's get the obvious ones out of the way. Cedric Subras, of course, Ash Greedy, he's racing really good. He was on real serious form last year. Um, he's he's, he's the, uh, the dark horse, the long shot, but he could always mix things up and he made final pretty much every stop I think last year. But I think the, the three riders that I'm really excited about, let's not forgetting Adrian Escoffe and Julian Lebeau and um, Fabian Iswad who are all tried and tested arena cross riders, but the newcomers, Greg Aranda and uh, Valentin Thiele, is that what we say? Thiele? Valentin Thiele, they were fast as anything in practice and they looked smooth, they looked in control. I get the vibe from what I've heard and having a little chat with Greg at Stuttgart when we went out there at the end of last year, not really phased by anything. So the big stage, this kind of setup, I don't think that's going to buzz them. They're used to indoor racing across Europe and doing well. So I, I think, I think when it comes to the new betting app with Bitstop Betting, I might be putting my money on maybe a Greg Aranda. Um, and yeah, Valentin TLA, they might be where the money's at. Obviously, the fact that we got the 250s lining up first. Okay, it's a short little run into the first corner, but the 450 is just that extra bit of grunt. And you would expect the 450s to be quicker through the whoops and stuff. So it's going to be cut and thrust. It's so hard to predict. I, I know somebody's going to ask me at some point, but at this point, I don't know. It's like just pick a name out of the hat of any sort of six or seven riders could win it. So how good is Arena Cross 2019 going to be? Six or seven years? I don't know. So I've only been involved for the past three years. I've been lucky enough to be um, the lead host starting last year and I get to do it again this year, which is a crazy privilege. I'm so honoured to be at the centre of the chaos that is the Arena Cross racing and of course the Fix Auto Freestyle Motocross. I, I think this is going to be, as it always is, year on year, bigger and better than ever, the best racing yet. Instead of the, the crazy non-stop road show that is six arenas, we have knuckled it down to three arenas here in Belfast, NEC, and then Sheffield. A lot of heritage in each of these arenas as far as motocross indoor racing goes. And we've got two nights at each. There's every reason why this year is going to be the best. From the 250s and the 450s going toe to toe, from the brand new Super Mini Cup, from the, from the 65 use always being great, from the new rookie class getting their chance to shine, um, from the, the, the pit stop betting app, which is going to get everybody even more on the edge of their seats. There's so much going on with so many brands getting behind this year's event because of the amazing work leading up to this point by all the team making this such an incredible series that this is unequivocally, categorically going to be the best Arena Cross series yet. 2019 is going to be amazing I think and I hope. We can't do any more to make it more professional, good looking, great entertainment and I, I work hard at getting the best riders and um, I think it's going to be even better than 
I think it will be, if that makes any sense. And when we get to, to the last round in Sheffield, I think it will be, if we think we've had fireworks up till now, I think it will be, it will just put it all into insignificance. It's going to be amazing. Light contenders, so who's going to win it? God, come on, these questions are tough. So I've been on a quiz show. Yeah, listen, Subaras is riding with a number one play. He was last year's pro champion. Stepping down to a 250, um, some would argue he, you know, he's kind of done that so he can get a clean run in the super final. He's obviously looking really good because of the experience he's got. Is that going to come back and bite him a little bit in the in the final? He's got to make it there first, of course. But you've got to say Subaras will start as one of the clear favourites. Two number ones out there, because you've got Joe Clayton rocking the number one last year's Pro Lights champion. I think in the Pro Lights class, you'd be mad if you didn't you know, get behind Sue, because he knows our series, he knows how we work. Um, Escoffier is very, very good, as is Tillier. But I think, I honestly think Joe Clayton is going to do really well. He's not my outside bet to win, but he's a guy that I hope will end up on a podium. And you know, I'm I'm British, and I want a British rider doing well in this series. You know, and, and that's my only hope. Who is it? Who is it? Oh, Joe doesn't get the best start. Oh, but we have got the bow is in front. Okay, so it's Scotty actually leading the bow in second. So, and there's the champ moving straight in Supras. Clayton getting nailed. By, uh, Valentin yeah, that was a textbook block pass from Valentin Tillier and Joe Clayton sitting in fifth place right now. Oh no, a stall from Valentin Tillier. That is unfortunate for the guy. It's a mechanical issue right there, which is oh, criminal no. for him. Okay, well here comes number one with the gold plate. Cedric Subaras, last year's pro champion, moving on to the back of the bow. And it's a good ride for the other number one, the pro lights champion from last year, Joe Clayton. But this is all about this top three. It all counts. Now, what we've got from Joe Clayton is he's sitting pretty in fourth place. He doesn't want fourth place, he wants more. Oh, 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 Subras makes a move. Gets ahead of the bow. That's the champion in full effect right there. Yeah, remember, only the top five. Here he goes up the inside. Oh! oh he played it nice. Neck and neck. Yeah, he played it nice. I reckon if, if he does that same move next lap around, he's going to be more aggressive. But uh, Subaras is now really putting on the heat. And actually, Escoffier, oh, he goes through with the whoops. Yeah, but Escoffier has a fast line. We saw, oh, OK, okay so this is where it goes. Here we go, here we go. He's this time. A little bit of contact. Oh, no. yes. That is aggression from Escoffier. Uh, Keeping cool, calm and collected in that turn. It's all going wrong for the Valentin. Classic block pass. So, new race leader, he's eyed it up about three times on the spin, and finally he got impatient and just ran it in there. Halfway stage. Night one, stop one, Arena Cross 2019, and our reigning champ, Cedric Subras, on the 250 this year, as opposed to the 450 on which he rode in 2018, is still looking odds on. Garcia, that was insane from him. Garcia looking good up the inside of the Suzuki. The Castrol Suzuki.
Suzuki Ryder and a much better start for last year's champion. Oh. Joe Clayton is in the mix right up behind Escoffier. Right, let's get cut. Escoffier is looking so, so smooth. Cedric for the horn. Oh, Diego showed up. Joe Clayton a wheel there. Tillier has not made a good start. Scooter Webster uh, back there for Shop Tech Kawasaki, but still going out of Martin Barr, number 50, is in it. He's feeling the vibe. Look at your guy in the blue and white. Martin Barr is going off right now. Get behind him, folks. Just to clarify the two number ones, the number one with the red plate is last year's Pro Lights champion, last year's 250 champion. The rider with the gold number one plate is last year's 450 champion, who's moved down to the 250 class. So now the choice that these guys are making, oh, the choice oh, is soon, it's going to take him. That no, but Joe isn't amazing. having any of it. Joe Clayton, the youngster, he's going to have to shut Soon's down right now before the Soon, block pass comes. Oh, no, no, oh yes, great. Joe Clayton. He's sick and hanging top. Oh, oh no. Tillier getting it all wrong again. It has not been a good start to his arena cross. So Martin Barr getting knocked down the pack a little bit, but he's still having a storming run. Oh, a little bit of a mistake right there from the bow. is powering through. Can he get back to Escovia? He's definitely gaining on him. This is the last lap, though. Sooms is going to make a move. Should he risk it? He's got him. He's, He's going to run it. in there. Classic. He's doing it. There it is. Classic. Your Not champion lost. right there. OK, and that's he's done that two motos in a row, two heats in a row. He's made the move on the last lap. Now, Joe Clayton oh. has got to be careful here because we have got Julian oh, LeBeau the making the move. The move. Lovely move, I've got to say. Did the undercover. Joe comes right back. Oh, no. So race again. The 450 class um, is also super stacked out, the, the pro class. Obviously, going on what we've currently, currently seen, uh, Greg Aranda is going to be strong, but he's strong throughout all of Europe when he races anyway. The guy is just some animal on a the bike. Then you've got Adam Chatfield, he's won the championship before, Charles Le Francois. You know, these are all riders that can that can be up there in, in the mix, you know, really pushing on. And that's what makes this whole thing so good. You just don't know. We, we, I don't know. None of us knows. And that's what makes it such high drama. But if I've got to choose one and go out on a limb, I would probably say Aranda is favourite, um, just because his form coming in. Um, but you know, I'll probably be wrong. Oh, Chavez gets squished out, but we see in third place right there, Le Francois showing his skill. Aranda in the Larius of outfits takes it by the ball by the horns. Is our 2014 champion in second place, and the German phenom Nicky Turi in there as well. Pasula eighth. Then we have got Bayless there in ninth, and unfortunately we've got notes. Uh, the rest of the guys following packs. So we've got two separate packs here, Jeb. The racing yes. is going to be right. Oh, it is going to be. These 450s are so powerful. It's so good to have Greg Aranda coming to do the arena cross tour for the first time. And let's be honest, you can't miss him. That is some get up, that is. Bring back the 90s. Um, he is getting away with it. So it's good for the Team Green Kawasaki team. And then Shop Tech Kawasaki start number four, Fabian Iswal, the 2014 champion, looking good ahead of uh, Charles de Francois. And then the beast, Hugo Vasula. Newbie to the arena cross scene, but no stranger to the big events, having won multiple titles across Europe. Greg Aranda on Team Green for Kawasaki is looking far too comfortable in his first ever arena cross night. Swept through the practice to take the fastest time, swept through qualifying and taking the top spot in the main event in the 450s. It is going to be some supreme battling between him, Subs, and the rest of the field come super final time. Oh. oh, we got carnage. Jack Brunel goes down on the Team Green Kawasaki machine. Gets pushed into the tough blocks. This time it's Charles de Francois has got the start ahead of Aranda. Then it's number four, Fabian Iswad, Hugo Basula. Then Nick Turi, Ash Greedy. Then number 17 is Matt Bayliss. So Brunel goes out of this one. OK, this is the first time all day that Greg Aranda's been behind in anything. What is going to happen here? He is all over Le Francois now. Le Francois 
He has taken one of the stops at Arena Cross before. He's no stranger to being out in front, but I'm not sure how much he's used to having Gregor Randa behind him. And this guy is charging. Look at the battle here as well. The Shock Tech boys. We have got Hugo Masuda. He's going to park him up. Look at that. Takes him to the wall. There we Lovely go. clean pass by Gregor Randa. Super aggressive. Goes into the lead. Nick Turing actually had his front brake on coming out of the corner there. Um, I don't know what that was about, but Aranda finds himself back up. But look at the way he's jumping into the whoops, man. That is so much confidence from the number 20. Remember, this is the first time he's ever come to uh, Arena Cross, and he's making it look exceptionally good. The super final thing is, is about getting the best riders on the start line and, and you know mixing it up. So so getting two fifties and four fifties together I think would be amazing and, and the only thing I could do to kind of mess it up even more was to allow the two fifties to get on the start line first. That gives you such an advantage in Arena Cross and then it's down to the four fifties to really push and work hard to come through. So it'll be fireworks I have no doubt. We're going super final racing it's a nice belt fast who gets the whole shot Oh, it's all over the place. Look at that from the Francois. He's out in front. Soom's in second. It's all the Frenchman with Gregory Aranda right behind Soom. That's going to be a race and a half. Yeah, that is. He won't look long. Charles the Francois to get away. But look at that. The 450 has already found his way to the front. It's early days, though, Matt. I, think, I honestly do think that we've got two or three riders that are holding back at this point in the race. One of them is number 20, Greg Aranda. I'm sure of that. And then you've got Fabian Islard as well. Look like a striking Cobra at some point in this race is going to pull the pin and just absolutely lay down some incredibly quick laps. He's within striking distance now. But have they left a little bit too much space with this guy? Charles de Francois looking very, very comfortable in front. Here we go for oh, Aranda. On tire, on tire right there. Into that corner around the MMA stand. There he round. goes, through the whips. He's got the run, but Zuba is looking strong on that pro systems. Husqvarna, and so in the time. Number three, Charles de Francois is doing a stellar job. And there's Aranda up the inside. Oh, no. it wasn't there. He showed him the wheel, though. So uh, Subaras will know he's there next time around. So we have the power of the 450. Will that be enough to get around? That pro systems. Oscar Barnett, Sue okay. Pippi and Cedric Soons. He's close enough, definitely. Aranda is close enough. He's going to put it in there this time. No doubt. There you go. Thank you very much. Oh, no. Sue keeps hold. Wow. The very, very cool riding from Soons right there. He does not crack under that pressure. And this is going to have to come to a head. It's going to have to come to a head with these last few laps. Somebody's going to make the move soon, I'm sure. They are getting super close. Aranda goes the wide line to keep speed out the outside. Oh, okay, is this going to be it for Aranda? Can he show him a wheel? He's not in space. Subaras is dropping to the start of the right there as he tries to close the Francois down. If the Francois can hold this pressure, it will be an amazing the victory. The, the tension is so high, and you cannot rule out Fabian Islam on that shot tech out. Oh, Aranda makes a move. He's he goes through, so he gets that he goes through and he blocks out Subs. He's in second okay, place. Okay, now he's in second, and he's got a shot at this. So we've got 450 against 450 right here up front. Francois. There's two, two laps to go. Just two Aranda's laps to go. Oh, wow. Can uh, the Francois hold off? Who's this your money on? Look here we go. Aranda. He goes, he goes, he goes. Oh. Aranda's done it. He slows down to that? block him. He's out in front. One lap to go. Aranda has played his so, so collected. Can he hold it Where? together? Where did that come from? I All don't of know. a sudden, he's just found a turn of speed down the woods. From, well, I haven't seen something like that. He's Look just a clear line. Now. Oh, wow. oh, look at this! Subaras has gone down with Francois! It's just everybody's coming on through. It's a race win for Greg Aranda. Second is going to be the shot tech Helzaki of Fabian Islam and Julian Lebeau of the Wallbridge Demolition. Unbelievable. There's your top three. Gregory Aranda drew first blood in 2019. The dominant Frenchman flexed his muscles in his Arena Cross debut, besting the reigning king, Cedric Subiras, in the superfinal main event. Aranda may have won the opening fight, but there are many more battles to come in this war. Yeah, it was uh, an amazing race. I, uh, 
I start from five and uh, come back to win. So uh, it was a good fighting with Subarat and Le Francois, and uh, I'm so happy for the for the team. It's very good for Kawasaki and uh, all the all the people who uh, who support me and uh, on the team. So thank you guys, and uh, it was a very good show. You've been doing arena cross for a while now. Yeah. Does it still excite you like it used to? Is it still oh, the same wow. thrill? That's a good question. Does it excite me still? Um, yeah, because I'm a motocross rider, you know, that, that's, that's where I still believe I'm 15 and want to go and do fast laps, which I obviously can't anymore. Um, but arena cross excites me because I'm mad crazy about the sport and quite a lot of times um, people don't see how much um, or how little sense this makes. You know, I've staged a lot of events and I've lost a lot of money and I've made it back and this year has been like a deal breaker for me. If it doesn't work, it doesn't carry on. It's as simple as that because I love it but I can't love it that much. But I love motocross and always will do and you know, if I can keep this going, great, but if someone else comes along and does a better job of me, I'll be the one sat in the seat and enjoying it. I'd love to be sat in the seat with a beer with my kids. Hopefully not too soon. <laughs> that makes sense, because like, I, I don't admit that very often. In the next episode of AX-Men, 